What are your greatest concerns still about the banking sector in Europe? I think it was pretty clear during the IMF meeting in Washington that uh, the European banking sector is a, a key global risk and has to be dealt with. Uh, I mean, since year end we have ECB taking over supervision, so they are probably much more prudent than some of the, the nationals has been. Um, we are going to see Basel Committee taking decision on, on risk models during the, the, the autumn. So the ability to fudge this is, I think, is coming to an end, uh, and therefore it's, it's probably necessary to do something more fundamental about these banks. And, and the only thing you can do is to put proper capital into them. Uh, and to my mind, uh, it's, it's a step in the right direction that the Italians are taking, but the idea of doing this with such a high degree of leverage, I, I think it, it would be much more credible if you could really muster some more solid capital in, in, in the bottom plate here. Proper capital, there's a question. And, you know, it's really a shame that Michael Wolf left Fedbank for me in one way. I mean, I know there's all kinds of controversies about property. We'll leave that on the side. Because he was a, a strong advocate, I think, of saying, look, we, we've got too much regulatory capital is being tied up now, and the Swedish regulators got them with pretty much, nearly double what some other uh, jurisdictions have got throughout Europe as well, and saying, we need to be unshackled uh, and be able to spend money, lend money as well. So it, is, is the Swedish model right with 20-odd percent regulatory capital, or, or is the, the balance of CET1 somewhere between 12 and 14, is that the right kind of level? What is the proper amount of capital to be held back? Well, I mean, the Swedish banks are, are very strong. They've been able to go through this crisis providing credit both to consumers and, and SMEs. I think if you have a huge banking sector like Sweden do, uh, with huge exposure to the Baltics and the rest of the Nordics, you need to have a high uh, level of capital. But, but that, we are there with the Swedish banks. They are already fit and proper for this new uh, environment. So I, I think today, I mean, there, there, there was a discussion going on for, for the last couple of years, but I think today, the, I think they feel much more comfortable going forward because they already are. That's the result of crisis. So you understand better than anybody else what a crisis with the banks can do. To, to go back to Steve's point, where do you think the fine line is between, you know, making sure that your banks are sustainable for the kind of exposures that they're facing versus being in a position where they simply don't have enough? Like, where is the line drawn here? Well, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, if you look at the US, they, they dealt with the crisis early on. We've seen that uh, some of the countries like Sweden, Switzerland, to some extent also the UK has, has actually uh, a, a much sounder banking system because it, it, you early on saw the banks building up capital while we're seeing some of the uh, particularly southern European banks with, with a very weak balance sheet and, and then they can't provide the role for the economy. So uh, I, I don't think you can get around uh, the fact that a bank needs to have some, some capital. It, it, it needs to have a sound basis. But then again, I mean, then you need to have taxes and other structures that makes it possible to build capital in the bank.